I've been trying to get this phone to work for the past two years and I finally figured it out. It's not a phone, it's a calculator. That explains why I couldn't get a dial tone. So I went to Walmart and I bought this fancy new telephone. Got a screen to do video calls on it there. And once I figure out how to use these little knobs to dial, then I should be good to go. Another phone for my collection and to keep me in constant communication with my fans. So you might remember a couple April Fool's days ago, I reviewed all of my Beach Boys tote bags. And last year I took you on an imaginary tour of my Beach Boys collection. But this year I thought, let's do something a little more serious for April Fool's. Let's talk about some of the more unusual Beach Boys items that I have, and things that don't necessarily warrant their own video, but are weird enough that today would be the perfect day to talk about them. So first let's look at some weird records. Now, at first I was going to talk a little bit about Shutdown, but Shutdown was actually very successful in its day. This is a collection Capital put out of various car songs. I'll let you look at the back there for a little bit. So you can see some of the artists. Of course, it's headlined by two Beach Boys tunes, Shutdown and 409. Interestingly, Shutdown is given a special little car sound intro, similar to what 409 has. And that's actually a really nice touch. But Shutdown does have some more unusual choices. I don't know how well the Beach Boys blend with, say, Robert Mitchum's take on the Ballad of Thunder Road, that kind of thing. And a lot of sort of forgotten tunes, you know, one-hit wonder kind of stuff on here too. But it's a fun collection, and it's mostly themed around cars. And furthermore, Shutdown's kind of important to the Beach Boys career, as it explains why there's a Beach Boys album called Shutdown Volume 2. You know, that was, of course, entirely the Beach Boys. That was the release from 1964 with Fun, 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 and Don't Worry Baby, and yes, Cassius Love versus Sonny Wilson, and so on on there. And I still think Carl Wilson maybe had the best commentary on the subject when he asked why Pet Sounds was named Pet Sounds. He said, well, we couldn't have called it Shutdown Volume 3, now could we? But Shutdown's kind of an interesting collection, but I thought, let's go a little weirder than that. So let's take a look at some Beach Boys records that are uh, a little more on the strange side. Here's one called Surf and Drag. Now this one, like Shutdown, is a multi-artist sort of collection. We've got courtesy of ERA Records, 1978 from CBS. So this only has a few Beach Boys tunes on it. They're kind of used, no doubt, as the you know promotional headliner sort of tracks there. But you'll see several other familiar faces besides just, you know, Beach Boy Surf and Safari and Surfer Girl. A lot of Jan and Dean stuff on there, including their version of Little Deuce Coop. Uh, their Dead Man's Curve is on there. Pipeline pops up on there. It's kind of an interesting set, really. And if I guess if you're looking for a collection of sort of early 60s surf songs and car songs and enough to kind of embrace the culture of the time. This 1978 collection isn't terrible. I don't think something like this would really be marketable today, though. It's kind of a product of its time. Cashing in for the nostalgia crowd, as it were. But it's a fun one to have, and one that doesn't get talked about very much, that I recall. And one that also pairs the Beach Boys with Jan and Dean. Here's a cassette. This has, from the Beach Boys, Surfer Girl, Surfin', and Surfin' Safari, and the rest are all Jan and Dean tunes, including Dead Man's Curve, Ride the Wild Surf, and so on. Their version of Help Me Rhonda is used, that kind of thing. It's a neat little release there. But you know, these releases are honest about not every song being from the Beach Boys. Not all releases are that for, uh, upfront about it, I should say. Here is the Beach Boys Wipeout. This is a record from 1982 from Seta Records. And I'll give you a second to look at that track list there. Here's the thing, the Beach Boys hadn't done Wipeout by this point. This is actually a remix of the Safaris version. It sounds like it's sped up and maybe it's a few other editing differences. Additionally, the Beach Boys never covered Balboa Blue or the Surfer Stomp. Those are tracks from the Marquette. So these are all public domain 
releases. Very early Beach Boys songs are in the public domain, or at least are interpreted to be in the public domain, I'm sure. As it's the Beach Boys discography, everything's probably more complicated than it has to be. But this is a really odd release, because everything's presented as a Beach Boys recording, even though several of them aren't. Now today we have releases like the, um, all the Beach Boys early year stuff, you know, Becoming the Beach Boys, and we have officially licensed, restored collections of some of these very early songs like Luau and Karate and What is a Young Girl Made Of. But this uh, does not use those. Interestingly though, this release is on the Beach Boys YouTube channel under the alternate title, The Great Beach Boys. So I guess figure that one out. Yeah, I'll show you real quick. I won't even take this one out of the sleeve. This set of records, record label for you. Pretty disappointing stuff. You know, I bought this years ago and thought, oh, maybe these, this has some unreleased demos or something. But nope, it's marketed as a Beach Boys release, but it doesn't actually include all Beach Boys songs. It included whatever the record label found to be public domain and available. But speaking of the safaris, you know I love VHS tapes, so how about this Surfing USA VHS tape? This video is Surfing USA and then the Safaris Wipeout set to various surfing clips. It is extremely short because that's all it is. There's nothing else on there. It is uh, certainly unusual. I'll show you the tape itself here. There's a rather blank, bland label there. No, no logos or anything. I don't know, kind of a weird curio. I guess I bought it for a buck at a thrift store. <laughs> so, it is a nice display piece though. The Beach Boys didn't use hot pink too much, so it does kind of stand out. You can see the spine. Alright, so we've seen plenty of mixtures of the Beach Boys and Jan and Dean, or the Beach Boys and their contemporaries, but how about we look at their Chicago Cubs stuff. So in the 80s, the Beach Boys were apparently commissioned by the Cubs to release a couple songs for them for the baseball season. So they redid Surf and Safari as Cubby Safari and Barbara Ann as Here Come the Cubs. And you can find both those recordings online very easily. It just says it's from the Beach Boys. I doubt all members of the group were involved. Mike Love is definitely present, but I couldn't tell you who else. And as far as I know, this was the only way that these were actually released. And there's a lot of other songs on here, too. Some baseball standards, like Take Me Out to the Ball Game and that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, the really weird kind of 80s updates. And I've never really figured out why the Beach Boys did this for the Cubs. I mean, I know they've done promotional stuff for, like, the Los Angeles Angels and things like that. But to do it for the Cubs, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, they are very enthusiastic, I will say, and I guess if you're a baseball fan, I suppose the whole crowd singing Cubs, 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 here come the Cubs, uh, would probably be, be a pretty fun addition to the day, but at the end of the day, very strange kind of promotional thing, but I like that I have it though, it's very unique. Actually, we'll go this way first. If you like country music, we know the Beach Boys have toyed with country music many times. They did that recent uh, collaboration with Low Cash, Stars and Stripes Volume 1, I've mentioned before. Someday I'll review that. And various songs like Cotton Fields, Living with a Heartache, you know, very country or country influenced. But if you ever wanted to hear instrumental bluegrass versions of your favorite Beach Boys tunes, you might as well get Pickin' on the Beach Boys, part of the Pickin' On series. They also have a very comprehensive YouTube channel. They did a Beatles album where it's bluegrass versions of Hey Jude and stuff like that. They did a bluegrass Linkin Park album, which I think is very interesting. But the Beach Boys ones, um, you can definitely tell every song, you know, but if you ever wanted to reimagine the Beach Boys as incidental music from the Dukes of Hazard, I guess this would be the album for you. Um, I will say the various banjo and other string instrument players are quite good. You can tell what every song's supposed to be. And I don't mind instrumental reimaginings of the Beach Boys per se. The Holly Ridge Strings did that all the way back in the 60s. I really like their albums. There's the Rockabye Baby, Lullaby Remix CD, all kinds of stuff like that. But this is definitely a niche product. I bought it because it was three dollars second hand. Here's actually the price tag on the inside. but. Uh, kind of an interesting bit there. There's no real liner notes, but like I said, Pickin' On has their own YouTube channel. 
And I gotta admit, they are good instrumentalists, even if you don't like bluegrass, country kind of stuff. Pretty fun. So you might say, well, you're gonna talk about some of the questionable CDs, and I have reviews of all the unlicensed, or should I say, gray area releases that I have. I don't have any out-and-out -out bootlegs, I don't have any of the Sea of Tunes releases or anything like that, but I do have a lot of these radio broadcast albums that are, they were sold on Amazon or sold in stores, so they have some claim to legitimacy, but at the same time they're not actually licensed from the Beach Boys, so I don't know exactly where these fall, but I have reviews of each of these live in Japan, live at the Fillmore East, the two Fourth of Julys, and here's the, uh, one where they do field flows and other things there at Nassau Coliseum back in the mid-70s. I'm still looking for the one that's the Philadelphia Spectrum live in 1980, because that has some songs in Keeping the Summer Alive. But these are kind of strange releases, but it's very interesting to have these, you know, unaltered, authentic live documents of the group of that period. And speaking of licensing, how about my Beach Boys guitar picks? I don't know if these are licensed or not, because it says copyright from Brother Records. They're using a lot of the official logos and things. These were to tie in with the 50th anniversary, but I've never been able to get a definite answer. But I thought they were pretty cool. I don't play any instruments that require a pick, so I don't have any need to use them, but I think they look better kind of as a display piece. And lastly, one I mentioned last year, will be my closer again for this year. I think you can still buy on the Beach Boys website the official Beach Boys flip-flops. Look at those cool patterns. Can't beat that. So you better rush out and get them before they're all sold out. Now we just gotta find an excuse to buy the Beach Boys socks that they've posted on there. Happy April 1st, everybody. We'll see you next time.